Hello, it is I, that lady with the pet cows who's crazy and sits on them. A lot of people always want to know, how can I have pet cows? How did you guys do it? So, yes, queen, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of give you as much information as I can to help because I cannot just give you a random number like, oh, it costs 2000 a year to have a pet cow because numbers fluctuate, feed prices are up or down, and it's very hard to give you exact numbers, but I am going to tell you all the resources required to have cattle and all the things that you will need and then also some other resources that you can go to for support in your specific area because that's the hardest part of it is you know grasses are different in different areas I can reach people on the other side of the country and world and I have no idea how to have cattle in New Zealand but I will hopefully get you some resources and know what you need for them so let's stay here what are you doing this so week? you've decided to buy cattle all right you've decided to buy at least three because you they are herd animals and you cannot buy just one two you're pushing it three is really ideal three or more is the chef's kiss because they are herd animals they do not want to be by themselves so you've decided that now you need to know what the heck do i need to do snow's gonna just flip my hair and athena's going to cause chaos because she wants feed any hoosies so the first thing you're gonna need is land and you heard me right you need land just enjoy that um <laughs> When it comes to land and how much you need, it depends on where you're at. It depends on the types of grasses. So the best thing you can do is a little Google search, my dear, my queens. You can Google search your stocking rate. That's what it's called. That's what you want to find out. If you do not want to Google, you want a better source, you can go to your local extension office, your USDA, your, we have an Ohio Department of Agriculture, so I'm sure that you could call whatever state or country you're in, and you will find that right information because that's going to tell you how much land you need per cattle. So let's say you need two acres in your area per one cow. That's that means to have three, you need at least six acres. Quick math. I know that shit was impressive. <laughs> so next up, that area needs to be fenced in. We just can't have free range of queens, okay? So you're gonna need to have fence or buy fence. Uh, we have high tensile woven wire with a strip of barbed wire just for shits and giggles. They really are not that big of jumpers except for Rocco when you take him away from his women. But that is what I recommend. We had high tensile when we first moved here and that is annoying and cumbersome. Um, just electric wire. I've seen it work for horses. Cattle ain't the same. They built different. So I would recommend a good quality fence because if you put a lot of money into it in the beginning, you're going to see the results because it's going to last a lot longer. You can, however, get grants. We actually got some grants for perimeter fencing on our farm from our local USDA offices. So I highly recommend checking in there because if you can get some help, no one is offended by a little bit of governmental assistance so that you can make sure you can make your dreams come true, baby. So now you've got land and you've got it fixed in. Cattle are wild. They were once wild and they are built for different weathers. They but they get a winter coat in the winter so that they can stay warm and then they shed it in the summer so they can stay cool. But they are your pets, they are your responsibility and it is nice to have at least some kind of shelter in case of any severe and adverse weather. I recommend at least getting some kind of three-sided barn shed or an entire barn, that way you can have it. It's also good if you ever have an animal get sick or needs special attention or needs to be quarantined from the rest of the herd, it is good to have some kind of barn situation on your property. The next biggest thing that you may not have thought of is water source. How are you gonna make sure that they are constantly hydrated? Because cattle do need a lot more water than a typical dog or cat. So we're fortunate to where we have a stream and a creek that run our entirety of our farm and in the fields where it is not, we also have a lot of naturally fed springs. So we have been able to use those and we actually got a grant for those as well, but a naturally fed spring waterer on the other fields that do not have the stream. So our water is actually kind of free other than when they had to put the spring waterer in there. So if if you do not have that option, you're going to need to look at county water and have a spigot so that you can get your cows some nice fresh water because a bitch can drink. <laughs> you've got the facility now, you've got the land fenced in with a barn and water sources. So now you're like, how do I feed these bitches? Cattle are pasture animals. They are ruminants, which means that they can thrive on lower quality forages. And that's what they like to do. They graze. That is what they're meant to do. That's in their nature. That's how they eat. So you're going to want to make sure you have enough land to rotationally graze because that is going to save you the most money, but you've got to make sure you're good to your land. So you want to make sure that you have different little pins marked off so that you can keep rotating your grasses so you can feed longer times because then it's very cheap. They're eating off the land. It's inexpensive. At that point, you're only paying for the water they're drinking. And then when it comes winter time, though, you're going to need to have some kind of supply or some kind of way to get hay because they're going to need that in the winter when there's obviously not the grasses that they need full time. 
So if you do not have the ability to get your own hay, we are lucky that we have a 13 acre hay field, but we do not have any of the equipment. We are lucky that the neighbor who owns the rest of the farm we're on has a deal with my dad where he does help us bale our hay because we do not have the baler and the mower and all that jazz. So he helps us there. And then when we need to supplement more hay, we have a local farmer that we can buy from. So I'd say your best bet is finding some local farmers, maybe a Facebook group, maybe contacting your local FFA, or again, the local agricultural society so that you are able to find a resource to be able to get that hay so that you can feed them throughout the winter months when you do not have grass to feed them. Feed is not necessary, actually. You do wanna make sure you have some mineral tubs, some salt licks, and other things to make sure they're getting all the vitamins and minerals necessary for them. But feed is not 100% needed if they are just the pet cows. We feed a lot of feed in the winter months because I have girls who are getting into their second and third trimesters. And so having that extra energy source is really vital and really essential. Also, my cattle are all a little bit overweight because I like them thick, they're pets, I love them. I don't mind to spend a little bit extra coin to keep them fed with hay and feed because they enjoy it and they really love it. But that is something that you're going to have to consider when it comes to having your pet cows. Equipment. So it's not necessary you have to have a trailer or a tractor, but just think of it this way. If there was ever an emergency case, it wouldn't be a bad idea to at least have access, like maybe a good friend, neighbor, or somebody you know that you could use a trailer if you cannot afford one on your own right now. And then also, if you don't feed square bales that can be a little bit pricier than round bales, round bales can be thousand pounds. And I don't know, unless you've got the fucking Hulk uh, work in your farm, you gonna need something to load that. So if you don't have a front loader tractor or a bale spear, that might be something you look into, or you might do a little offset of like, okay, I don't wanna buy a tractor or a bale spear or any of that. So I will just spend the extra money to feed square bales. And that's totally acceptable too. You know, whatever you wanna do on your farm is best, but just thinking about those options of equipment that you may need because it's not like a dog, you know? I mean, you can throw a baby calf in your truck because sis, I've been there, but a full size one, I don't think you're gonna be doing that do not think that's a possibility. <laughs> Vet bills are similar to any pet because your yearly regular kind of things you're going to be doing are just vaccinations and regular stuff like that, which is very similar to dogs, cats, things that you're probably more familiar with. The only difference is mostly you'll probably have a vet coming out to you versus going to them. So you'll have to deal with a farm call, but it is always good for any pet you have to always have that emergency little vet fund just in case anything weird happens, anything spicy, you know, we have some of that happen happen on our farm. It's just the way it works. Sometimes there's an emergency. It's good to have a little rainy day fun for those kind of things just in case. Obviously then the last thing would be buying cattle. It depends on where you want to go. You could see about just rendering or rescuing. Those options are few and far between, at least I've noticed. However, it is a possibility and that would be a cheaper route. You can also go to the stockyards. A lot of times you can find some cheap cattle there, but I will just tell you the cattle market goes up and down just like the stock market. I have seen cattle go for $600 for a full grown cow, or I have seen cattle go for $2,600. Um, if you just want a baby and you want them to grow on your farm, contact a local dairy. A lot of times they will outsource their babies to other farms because they may not want to bottle feed them. And so even though a bottle fed baby is a lot more time and energy, it's way more inexpensive to buy them at that age. And then they will be little friendly shits like little Iris. Oh, I'm sorry, I scared you. You've been in the water, huh? You've been swimming. So that is just the little food for thought. You could go and you could get a full grown cow at stockyards, sale barns, wherever. You could look at local Facebook groups, stuff like that, and see if there's any that are available because someone's trying to surrender or get rid of them. Or you could buy some babies from a local farmer and raise them to where they would be more friendly if that's what you want as well. With an older animal, you don't know their background, so it could take a lot more time for them to really get used to you, like any rescue or uh, situation where you're buying a, an animal that is already, you know, mature. Our biggest expense on our farm is feeding the cattle because we have to buy the extra hay because our 13 acre field does not make quite enough. And then also we do feed a little bit more because we are still breeding. So that is the biggest expense that we have on our personal farm. I do not have the exact numbers because honestly they wouldn't be helpful to you because unless you plan on going from zero to 32, it ain't gonna help you much. But I would just say if you want to have pet cows, it's doable. Just make sure you have all the resources and all the things necessary 
And as long as you have all those, you're good to go. And like I said, having somebody local would be ideal. Having some kind of source that you can go to for questions, comments, concerns, and just making sure that you have everything that you need for those babies and you're good to go. It's a lot more doable than I think people realize just because people are so accustomed to having animals as production. And obviously there's a lot that goes into if you had a feedlot or a dairy operation. But if you just wanna have them as genuine pets and you don't plan on doing anything with them, but just letting them be some grass puppies in your yard, it's not too, too crazy. I'd say land is probably your biggest battle because making sure you have enough acreage so that you can sustain them being on full pasture is really good though in the long run because you'll save on not having to buy as much hay because you can feed grass long. But those are the essentials if you want to ever have your pet little grass puppies. I am very fortunate to where me and my dad both have our own businesses that support our cattle because the herd is like split 50-50. It's half mine, half his. And we are able to have our pets because we just really love cattle. We've always enjoyed having them and we don't care care that they don't make us money because we just really love having cattle. It's always been a passion for both of us. And I'm really, really grateful that I get to share it with the internet now because that has been a way for me to secure that I know I can always keep my little pet babies. And I know that here in a couple years, I will be able to have a sanctuary like I want and rescue all kinds of farmyard, farm animals, you know? We don't have to stay specific to cows. I'm down to get all kinds of animals as long as I know how to take care of them so they have the best possible care. I wanna rescue all the babies all the babies I want to love them I want to love them but that was this video I hope it was informative and I hope that you learned something from it I'm always down to answer questions like I said it's just not an easy real quick you know you just need about three thousand dollars a year and you'll be able to have a cow no problem there's so much more that goes into it so I hope now you understand and I also want to make sure that I'm helpful and useful and giving you information off of my farm in southern Ohio does nothing for someone who wants to have a farm in freaking Arizona so just make sure that you know you need the vitals but then when it comes to making sure you have enough land and you have the resources that's where you're gonna have to do your own research and find some resources in your area specifically but that is it for this video i hope you had a fantastic time watching it give it a like and go ahead and subscribe and follow me along as we turn this bitch into a freaking sanctuary i really appreciate y'all's help in that but yeah i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day week month all the good vibes and i will see y'all in the next video peace